um, you said that these were rescued from. Yeah, they were left abandoned in a um, house. Uh -huh. um, oh wow, they were they were left abandoned in a house. Yeah, she, uh, they don't know how long they were in there for without food and water. Yeah, that was about eight years ago. Wow. Okay, you can tell that they're uh, they're pretty old. Oh uh, yeah. You tell by the condition of the shell. I mean, they're healthy, but. Uh, like oh, wow. Boris, yeah. Um, male turtle boris, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nipped her back toes off. Uh, when... They're actually both males. They're both males. They're both males, yeah. Oh, hey, you really? see that huge tail? Yeah. They're both males, so that's why he ripped this one's toes off because males fight. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's... Yeah. They're resilient, though. You know. They... So, how long has your aunt had had them? She's had them for eight years. Eight years. Oh, yeah. Cool. Our, um, her husband just died recently. Oh, I'm sorry. So she's losing the house and can't take care of them anymore. Yeah, yeah. So we were just like, you're actually like the first place I found. First place I emailed, you emailed right away. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm done looking. <laughs> <laughs> try, you know, uh, try to be there for them as much as we can. We so. appreciate it. Yeah, no, we weren't, um, we weren't going to throw them out in the wild. We were just going to keep checking until yeah. somebody eventually took them. Right. So you definitely made the process so good. Well, I'm, I'm glad, you know, they're, they're in a good spot and, um, you know, they, they, they look like they've been cared for. So, you know, tell your aunt, thank you, you know, for taking care of them. And, Sounds good. Thanks for taking them. Okay, we have quite the topic to go over here. But first, let's take a look at our newcomers. These are one of the planet's most famous and popular turtle species. These are Russian tortoises. If you know anything about turtles and tortoises, well, these two boys right here should be extremely familiar to you. This is the tortoise that ends up in so many different pet stores. In fact, almost, actually I'll go as far as saying I think every single Russian tortoise that we've taken in here, Garden State tortoise, started off in a PetSmart or Petco. This is the species that supplies those massive pet store chains and also smaller ones. The Russian tortoise comes from areas of the world like Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, places like that. They are a testudo species along with the Hermans, Greeks, Marginateds, all that. But these guys are the ones that most people come across. They're more popular in a sense than sulcata tortoises or redfoot tortoises because they don't get as big. You're looking at two fully grown males right here, females quite a bit larger, but still a very manageable species. The Russian tortoise goes by other names as well, such as the Central Asian tortoise, or the Horsefields tortoise, or even the Steppe tortoise. Nonetheless, very hardy species too, once set up properly, but very few are actually captive bred in consistent numbers. And there's a couple different theories for why that may be going on, but what just happened with these animals was, apparently, word on the street, they've been banned. What I mean by banned is they can no longer be exported out of the country that they come out of. The only country that Russian tortoises historically have been exported out of legally has been Uzbekistan. And apparently that's been stopped. I'm gonna include a link in the description of this video to a CITES document that explains it. And I'll even read you a couple things that this says. Now again, CITES is the Convention of the International Trade of Endangered Species. And in this particular document, it says, Testudo Horsefieldii from Uzbekistan. The working group recommends to the Animals Committee to retain the species country combination and that Uzbekistan should, number one, provide information and details on source codes for different specimens on how individuals from different sources are differentiated. They should then provide evidence on the ability to produce such high numbers of these specimens, provide information on cases where wild specimens have been exported as captive bred, and provide information on whether they intend to move all trade to captive breeding in the future. The reason this is interesting is because, again, this is the only place that allowed the export of this small testudo species. So originally, they actually allowed wild caught which is interesting because the vast amount of testudo species cannot be wild collected and exported. Even the more common species like an Eastern Hermans tortoise cannot be legally removed from the wild and then exported. So once they stopped the wild collection and exporting of them, they then only allowed farm bred. But the issue with that was the exact same number was being exported. So basically what happened here is CITES and other authorities involved in the legal and illegal exporting and importing of uh, protected species or any fauna 
caught on to, hey, these are not farm bred. These are not captive bred. These are the same exact numbers of animals that were coming in to begin with. So they have apparently completely shut the whole thing down. So what does that mean? Is that good or bad for the Russian tortoise? Well, in many senses, it's a good thing because if these animals are actually being illegally removed from the wild to be exported for the demanding pet trade, that'll stop. Their numbers can then restabilize and they can repatriate populations or if they're doing good in certain areas, they can continue to do good. But what this could also do is raise the prices on these animals in the pet trade to very high numbers, which could then inevitably put more pressure on these wild populations because these people are going to see just how much money these tortoises can go for and they're going to, like I said in other videos, they're going to want to cheat. Instead of trying to produce these things in captivity the responsible way and raising them to adulthood, they're going to go right to the source, to the wild and try to get these animals and try to get them out of the country. That's a topic for another day. So this is kind of a major wake up call for the reptile trade across the world because the Russian tortoise is popular pretty much everywhere in herpetoculture. And now this animal very well may go from being somewhat of a disposable pet at very inexpensive prices to high price tags. So it'll be interesting to see how things turn out. Nonetheless, we still get these animals commonly. Uh, people just can't take care of them anymore and they need to find homes for them. These particular animals were actually accidentally discovered by the family that gave them to us when a housekeeper went into an abandoned house to clean it and discovered them. They had no idea how long the animals had gone without food or water. There was another one that didn't make it, but these two males have survived the long term because this family had them for more than eight years, but they have sure enough become too much for them and now they're here. Russian tortoises really deserve a life outdoors in a beautiful pen here in South Jersey. Like all the other testudo species, they do very well for us. In fact, the other ones we have are fast asleep out there in the natural pens we've made for them. But the challenge with this species is really just the fact that they dig. Those massively long claws that you see are normal because this species digs very deep burrows. Kind of think of them as a mini gopher tortoise. They can do it fast and they can escape easily if you don't put their pen that far into the ground. So again, gonna be interesting to see what happens with these new regulations on Russian tortoises and where things are gonna go with them in the pet trade. Um, and even in the responsible aspect of the pet trade and private sector, some people do breed them. We have a little bit of success breeding them right here and there's nothing like a truly captive born and bred baby Russian tortoise. Look at this thing. Mini version of the adults right here. No idea if it's a male or female yet. So again, if it's a male, it'll top out about this size. If it's a female, it can get up to eight inches or more. But you can see it already has those really awesome, powerful claws that will let this animal dig very deep, even at this diminutive size. Baby Russian tortoises are extremely hardy animals and they are very robust right out of the egg. While some of the other testudo species are very tiny when they come out, like the Egyptian tortoise or the Western Hermit's tortoise, these guys are really kind of ready to take everything on right away. And that's really awesome because a lot of baby tortoises are not all that hardy or brawny like these little Russian tortoises can be. So right there, there's your sign of hope. There is what we want to see more in the future of these truly captive born and bred baby Russian tortoises to um, really hopefully become what we see way more of instead of animals that are, you know, clearly being taken out of the wild. It's not that hard to recognize a beat up, old, smooth shell, dinged up, wild Russian tortoise compared to a very clean looking captive bred one. And that's not to say that there aren't major advances in tortoise keeping today. We raise a lot of our tortoises outside and when you put them up against a wild caught animal, it's hard to tell the difference. But Nonetheless, this animal does not look like that animal. So there you go. That's the deal with Russian tortoises. So I will update you guys uh, depending on what we hear more of. A lot of people are talking about it in the reptile community right now. Um, there's negativity and positivity to it, I guess. But that's the story. On another note, you guys have been asking us about two specific animals lately. And I promised you that I would update you on them. Starting with Tembo the African leopard tortoise. Now, if you guys recalled that video that we just did not too long ago about her, we had a major issue trying to get her to lay her eggs. No matter what, we couldn't get her to do it indoors or even out when we let her out. Because remember, here in South Jersey, we do get mild days, like today, which happens to be 66 degrees, and we were trying to get Tembo to lay her eggs so that she didn't become egg bound. Well, we got kind of good news. She attempted to nest, but abandoned the nest. And then I found 
one of her eggs, which is right here in this egg box on the ground. I don't know if it's good yet. It happened on Christmas Eve, so it'll be a little while before I know if it's actually good or not. But instead of putting it inside a nest that she dug, she instead just dropped it on the ground, um, which could mean a few things. It could mean that she really is starting to get uncomfortable and needs to get these eggs out of her. The good news is it's not over calcified and what I mean by that is you can tell when a tortoise has been retaining its egg for way too long because once it does expel it, it's very slimy and it's rigid feeling and because it's got a lot of extra calcium growth on it. Um, this is a perfect egg and it's sitting right here. Um, there's definitely more in her. A big tortoise like that is going to lay quite a decent sized clutch and Tembo's magic number is usually 11 eggs. So even though she's still eating, acting totally normal, I have yet to get another egg out of her. But not losing hope, fingers crossed. She's not changing any behavior. She walks just fine. She's reactive. She's a pig when it comes to eating. So I don't know. Or hey, maybe, maybe this is a rare case and there just was only one egg inside her. I don't know. But what I want to show you I want to take advantage of this moment to show you guys the differences in the size of eggs and the appearance of eggs between different tortoise species. So right here is Tembo, the African leopard tortoise's egg. That's a nice standard size leopard tortoise egg for a very large species. And the African leopard tortoise is considered the world's fourth largest tortoise species. No surprise that they've got big eggs, but check this out. The egg right next to it, which also provides you guys and myself with a nice little update on yet another animal we have here, who is Liberty, the Forstens tortoise that was found by the Turtle Rescue of the Hamptons walking around the cold streets of New York last month. She laid an egg. Now, tortoises lay eggs just like birds do without being with a male, but we're still trying to incubate this egg because we have no history on Liberty. She was just found walking around in New York, even though her species is native to the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia. So we're giving the egg a shot to see if it is in fact fertile. And this is a critically endangered species, so it would really be awesome for this to be fertile. But check it out. It's pretty much the exact same size as Tembo, the leopard tortoise's egg. And Forsten's tortoises are a fraction of the size of a leopard tortoise. You're talking, you know, around eight to nine inches fully grown for a Forsten's and then over 20 inches for a leopard tortoise. But Forsten's will only lay one to two eggs on average in a single clutch, whereas leopards like Tembo will lay 11 or more. The next four eggs are from an Indian star tortoise who also laid the same night, Christmas Eve, as Tembo, and you can see how much smaller they are. But this tortoise laid four of these eggs, and an Indian star tortoise is about the size of a Forsten's tortoise, seven to eight inches. The next few eggs are three-toed box turtle eggs, and then the final egg is a Western Herman's egg. These eggs came from animals that came to us as rescues in the fall, so that, that was really off schedule for them to lay. We don't think the Western Herman's egg is good, but we know the three-toed eggs are good. Uh, and we're still waiting on these tortoise eggs to see if they're good. The way we'll be able to tell if they're good is if a white spot starts forming on the top of the egg. That means the embryo is starting to draw calcium from the eggshell, so the egg will go from an opaque color or pink yellow color to a beautiful bright white. And then you can candle the egg and you'll start seeing veins and eventually an embryo. And then once the egg goes completely dark, it's time to hatch. But the incubation duration for these species varies. We'll get into that in another video. So let me close these up for you guys uh, and get them back into the incubator. It's nice and warm in here so we don't have to worry. Fingers crossed that everybody in there is fertile, but if not, the goal here is to make sure the moms are healthy and getting the eggs out of them is priority. So there's another animal that you guys have been wondering about and I'm still wondering about it. My favorite Chinese box turtle. If you recall that video where Casey and I were scrambling to round these turtles up before a bad cold snap hit, uh, and I was leaving for Arizona for the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group conference. We never found that turtle in time. We got the rest of the group into a cold frame where they could safely hibernate for winter, but we never found her. But since it's 66 degrees today, why don't you guys come out there with me to the Aquascape ecosystem? Let's give it one last shot to see if we can find her. Well, here's one Chinese species. Not the one we're looking for. This is the Chinese golden thread turtle, Moremi sinensis. There's a couple of them in this pond, but I'm not concerned about this animal because it's in the water. The whole reason I was concerned with the Chinese box turtle was because the temperatures were getting so frigid that I was afraid if she wasn't down deep enough in here, she could freeze solid. Box turtles really need a lot of leaf litter and pine litter and I wasn't expecting that cold snap to come when it did because we're not supposed to get temperatures like that here in South Jersey until, you know, late next month, February. 
uh, and it, it happened on a whim, and that's why I wanted to get the Chinese box turtle safe. I do have faith that she's all right because there's so much sun here, even on these bitter cold days, that the ground doesn't like turn into a complete rock where it's like frozen all the way down. So I, I think she's okay, but I still would love to find her. So let me send uh, this Chinese golden thread back on its way. And uh, I see another turtle that I would love to grab if I can. Look at that big beauty. Not a turtle from China. This is the Florida Cooter, and she's been out today because it's so warm. I love being able to check the turtles out in the winter. It's a nice way to keep tabs on them. She looks awesome. She's healthy. I actually saw her basking on a rock before, but have you seen a Chinese box turtle? No? Thanks for your help. Before I put her back, actually, this is a great time to do a comparison for you guys with yet another turtle. Come here. Gotcha. Okay. You all know what this is. Red-eared slider. Red-eared, red-eared, red-eared slider. World's most common turtle and most familiar species. Very similar to a cooter, yet it's a slider. The genus that this turtle is in is Pseudemys, whereas this animal is in the genus Trachemys. So look at that. There's some differences for you guys. You'll notice, of course, the cooter does not have the red ear, or the red stripe, rather, that the red-eared slider has. But, you know, they're probably not gonna be all that cooperative right now. Well, there you go. There's a good little view of the head of the red-eared slider in case you're not familiar with it. Some notable differences there. The cooters obviously do get bigger than the sliders, but both are absolutely massive freshwater turtle species native to the United States. And you can see why these animals always end up in situations where they need new homes. It's because they're just not suitable for fish tanks. They need to be in a pond like this. You ladies ready? I'm gonna send you on your way because you're breaking my arms. Whew. All right, they're telling me they haven't seen a Chinese box. You know, again, this turtle could be in the water because sometimes box turtles will choose the water to hibernate in or brewmate in and that's, uh, that's much better, in my opinion, because uh, you're not gonna, this is never gonna freeze solid. It's, it's always got movement, especially when these two clowns are helping out. What's the matter, you guys? You thirsty? Good quality water. Still no dice, but I'm gonna remain hopeful that she is somewhere underground. I don't think we're gonna see her for the rest of winter. We know she is in fact in here, of course. Um, and then hopefully in the spring, we will then be able to update you guys. But uh, there you go, there's your update on those few species. And uh, wish me luck, you know, or wish her luck rather. I, th I think she's okay.